In this video, we are going to see about infertility, especially female infertility. What are the causes as well as investigations to, to diagnose female causes of infertility. Okay. So, first of all, what is the definition of infertility? Infertility is the inability to conceive even after 12 months of unprotected sexual intercourse. So, even after one year of uh, sexual intercourse, if the female, if the, if the couple is unable to conceive, then it is called infertility. So, now I will just show a flowchart as to how a normal fertilization occurs. So, we know that there are hormones called FSH and LH which in turn will act on the ovary to produce ovulation and thereby release the ovum, right? Similarly, for males also, we have got FSH which acts, FSH and LH which acts uh, in helping the production of sperms. So, LH will act on the Leydig cells and produce testosterone and both of which will help in the, in the production of sperms. And these sperms will then travel through to the epididymis and during the process of sexual intercourse through erection, emission and ejaculation, these sperms are uh, produced onto the female genital tract. So, in the female genital tract, we have already got ovum here, right? And this ovum would have reached the fallopian tube by then. From the ovary, the ovum reaches the fallopian tube, okay? And then the sperms will also travel through the vagina to the uterus to the fallopian tube and finally in the ample of the fallopian tube there will be fertilization and after fertilization that embryo will travel to the uterus and in the uterine endometrial wall finally they, it will be implanted and from there it will grow on to produce from the mature fetus right so this is a flow chart showing how a normal fertilization occurs but if there is any problem anywhere in this flow chart the baby will not be formed okay so basically the causes of female infertility can be divided into mainly based on the location like for example you can we can uh, say about ovarian factors tubal factors uterine factors as well as cervical factors okay so we see each one by one first of all ovarian causes so in this the basic problem is there is no ovulation or there is hypogonadism so what is the mechanism here so, we know that hypothalamus produces GnRSS, gonadotropin releasing hormone, which in turn will act on the anterior pituitary to produce FSH and LH. And this FSH and LH will in turn act on the ovaries to produce ovulation, right? Now, in the ovarian causes, the ovulation is not occurring. It could be due to an ovarian problem and that is called hypergonadotropic hypogonadism. So, in this case, there is increased FSH and LH, but the ovaries are not able to produce the uh, ova. Okay. So, this part of the cycle is normal. Up to FSH and LH is normal, but the ovaries cannot produce the ova. That is called, that is the first one, that is hypergonadotropic hypogonadism. The next type is due to hypothalamic and pituitary causes. So, in this case, the, the, there are decreased FSH and LH. And because of that, there is no ovulation. Okay, so a good example for this is Kallman syndrome, wherein the, the hypothalamus and pituitary are affected, but the ovaries are normal. Okay, and finally, we've got hyperprolactinemia, which inhibits FSH and LH secretion. So, in this, the there is increased prolactin secretion, which by feedback inhibition will cause decreased FSH and LH. Okay, so these are the different ovarian causes of female infertility. So next we'll see what are the investigations that are to be done in such cases. How to know whether the ovaries are functioning normally. So thus we have the tests for ovulation to know if the ovum is produced or not. So the first test is called the cervical mucus study. So here you can see that this is called the Spinberg kit. Okay, so basically you analyze the consistency of the cervical mucus and if it, it is stretchable like this then it is called then it means that the cervical mucus is good for ovulation or good for fertilization okay see you can see that it is stretching between the fingers which means that this is called spin burkit formation and thus it shows that the cervical mucus is conducive for the entry of sperms Next is the ferning pattern. It is to study the ferning pattern. See, so if we keep that uh, cervical mucus under the microscope, we can see this 
fern like structure this is called the ferning pattern okay which is another test for ovulation next you can also assess the basal body temperature that is you check the basal body temperature of the woman i can see that just before ovulation there is just during that time of ovulation there's an increase in body temperature okay and finally you can do different hormonal studies to know exactly whether there's an enlarged surge or whether the hormonal level are optimum for ovulation to occur so these are the different tests for ovulation okay cervical mucus study ferning pattern basal body temperature and hormonal studies now next we'll move on to the tubal factors what are the different tubal causes of infertility so the first cause is blocked fallopian tubes so here you can see that just like in this picture you can see that the the fallopian tube is blocked okay so the ovum from here cannot travel and reach the uterus the sperm also cannot reach onto the other side so that thus the fertilization will not take place so very good example for this is pelvic adhesion so here you can see that this is an example for pelvic adhesions which can be due to any cause of previous surgery or endometriosis causing this pelvic adhesions or even endometriosis itself causing an obstruction in the fallopian tube okay so because of this what happens the sperm cannot reach the ovum and the ovum cannot reach into the uterus so that is a tubal cause for female infertility so what is the investigation that we can do for this the investigation that we do for tubal causes is called hystrosalpingography hystrosalpingography hystro means uterus salping here means the fallopian tubes so hystrosalpingography so basically in this what we do is we insert a catheter okay which contains a contrast medium and then we push it into the uterus we push that contrast dye into the uterus so if the fallopian tube is patent the dye will travel through the fallopian tube right but if it is blocked the contrast dye will not be able to move so then if you take an x ray you can see a picture like this so you can see the patent tube as well as the blocked tube so this test is important this is called hystrosalpingography for tubal causes right now next so here this is a text of uh, what hystrosalpingography is so basically there is it is administration of radio opaque contrast media via cannula or catheter inserted into the uterus through the uterine cervix it outlines the uterine cavities in fallopian tubes and determines the patency of fallopian tubes okay so basically i wrote this text here so that when you write an answer even if sometimes even if you know the concept you will not be able to produce that into the paper okay so that is why i have written a text for it so that it will be easier for you to reproduce that concept in the answer paper okay so that is called hystrosalpingography so next we'll see the uterine causes of female infertility so the uterine causes as shown in this picture it can be some malformations of the uterus which will prevent implantation or it can be due to endometrial problems which is again the which is causing an a uh, de uh, decreased chance for implantation okay so uterine causes are first of all uterine malformations as shown in this picture and also synecae what is synecae they are abnormal connections right it can be due to myomectomy curettage or endometriosis which causes this addition in the uterine wall or it can be due to tum tumors like fibroid adenomyosis and uterine polyps which will cause uh, make it difficult for implantation to occur so now we'll see the cervical causes of female infertility they are again uh, just like in uterine anomalies you got can have de development anomalies can have tumors trauma cervicitis all which can cause a failure of implantation and failure of an environment which is conducive for sperm entry right so see there's an example for developmental anomalies tumors which uh, can occur especially at the cervical wall trauma as well as cervicitis all which will prevent uh, the prevent the proper fertilization and implantation to occur right so next what is the management for this uterine and cervical causes we've seen the uterine and the cervical causes separately so management obviously depend on the cause of it so you can do an hysteroscopy to uh, to know if there are any abnormalities of the uterine wall okay if there is any sign of there or if there are any if there are any additions you can remove it you can do a laparoscopy especially in case of endometriosis and other gynecological surgery can be done according to the problem so if it is a poly we can do a polypectomy if it is a fibroid you can do a fibroidectomy 
So like that you can treat the cause which is leading to infertility in case of uterine and cervical causes. So next we will see the other causes of female infertility. So the other causes are obviously infertility of unknown origin, immunological infertility that is due to the immune, immune makeup of the female. It can, it can be of many types either there may be the antibodies to the sperms which is causing the destruction of sperms and thus implantation is not occurring or it can be due to an incompatibility of the fetus and the mother just like in RH group incompatibility which in turn is not allowing proper implantation or uh, the fa causing failure or failure to thrive for the fetus or it can be vaginismus which is painful intercourse. So here also the intercourse is painful so proper penetration does not take place and there can be other genetic factors which might be causing this recurrent abortions. Okay. So thus to summarize the different ovarian uh, different uh, causes of female infertility we've got ovarian causes which are mainly hypogonadotropic or hypogonadotropic hypogonadism. We've got tubal causes which can be due to pelvic additions, endometriosis, hydrosalpins and other factors. Uterine causes mainly due to uterine malformations, cyanicae due to myomectomy, curatage or endometriosis, tumors like fibroid, adenomyosis and uterine polyps. Cervical ca causes can be development anomalies, tumors, trauma and cervicitis. And other causes it can be due to unknown origin, vaginismus, immunological infertility and genetic factors. Right? And we've also seen how the investigations of these. Right? For ovarian causes we've seen the tests for ovulation. For tubal causes, we've seen hysterosalpingography. For uterine causes, we've seen laparoscopy, hysteroscopy. Uh, and for cervical causes also, laparoscopy and hysteroscopy, etc. Depending on what the problem is. Okay. So, in general, you can um, put this under the heading. How, how to manage female infertility. You can give antibiotic treatment if the problem is infection. You can give estrogen or progesterone hormonal therapy in order to support the pregnancy. Surgical intervention, if it is a polyp or a fibroid, you can surgically intervene and remove that so that the implantation can be made possible. And if all this is, if the problem is vaginismus or uh, difficulty in penetration, you can move on to artificial insemination and in vitro fertilization. So this is how we'll manage some of the uh, methods or principles of management of female infertility. So that's all we've seen in this video. We've seen the major causes what the investigations to be done and the roughly the management okay so i hope this concept is clear thank you